Hi folks, I've never had an oscilloscope before ever and I've needed one for over 15 years. So I finally went ahead and bought this one. It looked pretty interesting and I had to order from overseas, which I normally don't do anymore. But that was the only way to get this one, so I went ahead and ordered it. Here I'm just going to share my first impressions of the scope, knowing nothing hardly about them and having just opened it. Please note that I paid for this scope with my own money, so it's not a paid review. I'm just going to show you my first impressions and do a little bit of testing with the scope. It's not going to be a super technical deep dive, but just an overview of what a normal person can use an oscilloscope for, especially in the solar power and solar energy field. The scope is supposed to have up to 110 megahertz bandwidth, but I don't think I'll ever really need that. It says it's super cost effective and yeah, it was only uh, 80 bucks or so. It depends on where you get it from. I think it's a good deal, at least at first glance. So it comes in this rather nice padded zippered case, which I think is a nice touch, especially for the money. I think it is nicely outfitted with accessories. I'm surprised at how much stuff you get with it. You get a charger, you get two different types of cables to probe with, you get a USB charger, you get a manual. So really nothing to complain about there. Now I must say the manual that comes with this oscilloscope is nothing short of a masterpiece. It is absolutely targeted at the beginner and novice oscilloscope user. The probes that come with this oscilloscope are pretty much the same thing you would find on any normal oscilloscope at a higher price range. I really can't find anything to complain about. On the side there is a switch to go from 1 and 10 times, which is for measuring higher voltages. Here's the charging cable and power brick, which is of course not a North American plug, but that's okay. And there's a set of alligator clips to B and C for attaching the scope to various circuits. When I first picked this device up, I kind of felt like this was what I wanted. It's almost like holding a multimeter, but it has a few more buttons on it. It has a nice rubber case around the outside of it and nice rubber buttons. And the screen is pretty small, but it's big enough to do the job power switch on the bottom and there's a built-in stand that clips into the back. At the top there is the connection for the probes as well as a micro USB connection for charging. In my opinion the screen is rather on the dark side but it is 100% legible and you can absolutely see everything that's on there so at this price level I don't see how I could complain. I would say that the scope is not lacking on functions. It looks just like an oscilloscope should look. It has all the different things there that I want to see. It also has some menus and different settings, including an internal self-calibration routine that you can run. Okay, so folks, I've never used an oscilloscope before. I have my little bench power supply here in the background. It's just putting out 5 volts. I've plugged the oscilloscope in. You can see right there the probe is on 10x. And I know you have to press this button down here for 10x so it can measure higher voltages. I have clipped my ground connector onto this green alligator clip because it's really short. And that way I can clip the green alligator clip onto the ground of the power supply and then I can just probe with the probe and go ahead and take a measurement. So what I'm interested in seeing at the moment is I want to look at the noise that's on these power supplies. I've needed a scope for 15 years but I just didn't want a giant box with knobs on my workbench. I just don't really want a lot of knobs and settings. What I like about this so far is it's almost like a multimeter or a calculator. It's just really small. I hope it's going to work out for me. And let's go ahead and just take a measurement with this on the power supply and see what happens. Ground connected to the negative output and I've got the positive lead here. Now I'm just going to connect the power supply to the scope probe and see what happens. Okay, I saw the line go up and see there is a little bit of noise on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press auto. Yeah, it has actually auto adjusted. And you can see that it's on 2 volts per division. So we're looking at 2 volts, 2 volts, and then like one volt and then maybe a half a volt and you know that's what the power supply is set to 5.4 volts I doubt that's exactly accurate frequency it's jumping all over the place let's try turning the power supply up I don't know I'll make it like six volts maybe there you go you can see it it's more or less a straight line so being a total novice at oscilloscopes one of the things that I want to be able to see is an inductor and if you look on this USB power board there's actually a bunch of inductors. That's those gray things right there. This board is actually live and in operation. It's actually powering some of the camera lighting that's lighting up the picture. So I'm going to go ahead and probe one of those inductors. I'm just going to randomly pick one of them. You can see the, the scope is reading it. Now it's moving around quite a bit. And I believe that crosshair in the middle 
you can see the wave has triggered or locked onto that crosshair in the middle. The scope appears to have triggered, and of course this is not a static waveform, it's moving around. And I don't know how accurate or how good this scope is at the moment, but it's showing me more than I've ever been able to see. It does say 8 kilohertz at the bottom, peak to peak is 4.96 volts. Incidentally, this is a 5 volt power supply, duty cycle 0.5%. So a lot of this is a little bit over my head, but this is going to make a big difference. Uh, with solar power, you have inverters, you have charge controllers, you have DC converters, and being able to read those and see what they're doing is very important to me. And I'd like to be able to see how much noise there is on a power supply as well. This should allow me to do that. Now this scope also has a calibration waveform. So right there is a little piece of metal sticking out of the top of the scope. And supposedly you're supposed to be able to probe that and you'll get a waveform. So let's stick the probe on that and see what happens. And yeah, it's got a waveform. I'm going to hit the auto button right there. When I press auto, there seems to be a really small relay inside that's clicking. One kilohertz, three volts peak to peak, 49% duty cycle. So it's like a, this is like a PWM half on, half off. Very cool. I never had access to this type of information. Now, probably one of the most common things that a solar person would want to know is what the waveform of an inverter looks like. This is a pure sine wave, small pure sine wave inverter. Yeah, it's not very safe. I've got it running directly off a solar panel, believe it or not. It's running at 18 volts. I've got two multimeter probes plugged in. The red one comes around here. It's just right there. The black multimeter probe is going around to this green alligator clip, and that's plugged into the ground of the scope probe. I'm going to try to get the waveform on the oscilloscope. Okay, so the oscilloscope is all connected. I don't say the connections are very professional, but you can see right there where I'm pointing, that's live. That's actually 120 volts AC live. So kind of risky here, and the inverter is powered on, so I know it's putting out AC 120 volts. So I'm on 10x. I did switch the scope to 10x. There's a 1x, 10x button there. I do understand that much. The probe is also on 10x. Now I'm going to press the auto button. It's just off the screen, but I'm going to go ahead and press it right now. You can hear the clicking inside. And there's the waveform. Wow, that isn't the best pure sine wave I've seen. That's actually pretty bad. I mean, it'll, it'll get by. And some of what I'm seeing here could be the scope itself. It could just be noise. Who knows? I, I'm a complete novice. I have no clue what I'm doing. So that isn't the best sine wave I've ever seen. But it more or less is a pure sine wave. Of course, it's okay for running small electronics. Probably charging a laptop through a power supply would be no problem. Now, I've used this inverter for some time. And, you know, it serves me well but I'm surprised to see what the waveform actually looks like. It has quite a nasty peak on there. And it currently says 59.8 hertz, 60 hertz, so that's about right. Peak to peak, 22 volts. Very interesting, 25 volts. So this is information I normally can't see or get. And this could be very, very handy. Now this inverter has been modified. Who knows? It could be that's the reason why the waveform looks like that. Who knows? But at least I know it's working. It is more or less a sine wave. I can check the frequency, 60 hertz. That's very handy. I need to know that. Now, one of the things a solar enthusiast might want to do is check on a some kind of a power supply that has a switch in it. For example, a power MOSFET. It could be the H-bridge on an inverter boost stage. Or it could just be a charge controller that has MOSFETs in it. And... The easiest way to demonstrate this is just to look at a DC-DC converter. This is a DC-DC buck converter. It's a very small one. So for me, what I want to see is I want to see if I'm troubleshooting a power supply like this or a charge controller or an inverter, I want to be able to see the switching that's going on inside that circuit. Now in this case, this power supply just has an all-in-one chip on there, but it has got switching in there and you can see uh, some activity on the pin. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my ground clip to this DC DC converter here and I'm going to connect it to the negative or the ground and it looks like this side is a negative so this would be the ground even though it's on the output it's still the ground it's the same thing so let's go ahead and probe the circuit I've got it on 1x I'm going to try just probing the pin all the way on the right because that's the easiest to get to okay I've got my probe on there and right away you can see that there's a signal 
5.6 megahertz, well, 4.3 megahertz, 2.4 megahertz. So it's moving around quite a bit. 16 millivolts peak to peak. Now, if you look here, I can zoom in by pressing the NS button, which is nanoseconds. So it's changing the time base. And time runs left to right on the screen, and voltage is up and down or vertical. So I'm going to press the time scale button. And you can see it's zooming in a little bit. There we go. It's jumping around a little bit. Let's try probing a different pin on that all-in-one chip. And I'm trying to probe it without shorting it out. Okay, I'm on the second pin. There isn't really much to see. It's mostly a straight line. Let's try the third pin. Press the auto. And once again, it's more or less a straight line. There is some movement on there. Now a scope I know is very sensitive and it's going to pick up noise, so it's possible that some of what I'm seeing is noise. Let's go for the fourth pin. Oops, I just slipped off the chip there. There's a little bit of activity. Let's press auto again and get it to recalibrate. There is a tiny relay inside the scope. I can hear it clicking. I didn't know it had anything like that. Now I don't have the pinout for this chip I'm probing, so I don't have any information about what pin does what. I don't need that for this example. I just want to see if this scope can read a signal because it's brand new and I want to make sure that it's not defective. Now on this DC converter board, there's actually a diode over here and I'm going to put the probe on that. And there's the signal, there's a waveform and it does jump around, but it's interesting to be able to see this. Let's try changing the time. Yeah, changing the time does make a difference. You can see a lot more detail. Very interesting. Here's a PWM board that I have, and I've connected the green alligator clip to the ground plane on this circuit board. This is just a simple PWM controller here. It's nothing advanced. And I've got a trim pot here, which controls the PWM duty cycle. These boards are very common. You can find them everywhere. There's actually a switching device right there. If you look right there where I'm pointing, I've just set this knob to something kind of arbitrary. I'll put it over there. Let's go ahead and put the scope into the screen here and probe one of those pins. And right away you can see I'm getting a signal. I'm going to press auto. And there you go. That's a PWM signal. Normally I would not be able to see anything like this, so it's very, uh, very interesting. Okay, let's try the middle pin. Yep, and I th can see that's different there. Let's hit, hit auto again. There you go. And actually, just out of curiosity, let's try the third pin. Yeah. I like that this oscilloscope has a built-in stand. I'm already using it right now to hold the oscilloscope so I can get my other hand free. Now I'm going to probe that first pin again, and I'm going to use the knob on the circuit board to adjust the duty cycle and see what happens. And there you go. There's your classic PWM. You can see right there. 67% duty cycle. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, as I turn the knob, it's telling me what the duty cycle would be. That is really, really neat. Yeah, I'll definitely be using this. I can just think of all kinds of things I can use it for. And now I'm turning it down really low. Let's see what 100% looks like. Yeah, 100% is essentially a straight line. Oddly though, the duty cycle is jumping all over the place. So there's 94%, which looks about right. Peak to peak, 5.4 volts. Really do like this. Now you could use this to look at a MOSFET, the gate pin on a MOSFET inside of an inverter, inside of a DC converter, inside of a charge controller, and there's all sorts of applications you can use it for. So this oscilloscope appears to be what I was looking for. I always wanted an oscilloscope that was more like a multimeter that was small, I don't have room on my workbench for a giant box with knobs and switches. I really didn't want to learn all of that anyway. This oscilloscope at first glance appears to be what I've been looking for. Just a simple device that I can use to look at a waveform, to look at the signal on the gate of a MOSFET, for example. If I'm troubleshooting a charge controller or an inverter or a DC-DC converter or a power supply, this will allow me to look at waveforms without too much effort. And what I really like about it as well is it's isolated. So since it's battery powered, you can connect this to something that might be a higher voltage and you don't have to worry about accidentally shorting something out. Of course, you do have to be careful with the probes themselves because you can short 
easily short something out with the probes. So of course they're metal, it's just like using a multimeter. I made a video recently about using multimeters and I really focused on being careful with the probes, so I'm not going to repeat that here. I also like this rubber case that it comes in. That's very nice. I don't plan to drop this or beat it up. I'm going to be careful with it, but still having a rubber grip on it is nice. It feels good in the hands. The screen is small, but it's not going to stop me from using this device. I'm not going to spend hours staring at it. I just want to have it like a multimeter. When I need it, I need it, and it'll be ready. I actually bought this scope from overseas. I normally don't buy overseas anymore, but I wanted really badly to try this scope, and I'm glad I did. It took a long time to get here. However, I must say one of the best things about this scope is actually the manual, which is shocking. Usually you don't get a very good manual. The manual that this company produced is nothing short of amazing. I'm sure it is a Chinese company. They went out of their way to explain how to use a scope. And what's really nice is if you come back here, they have common problem analysis. This is gold for newbies. So people who are not familiar with oscilloscopes and don't understand how they work and are not sure how to use them, this part of the manual wins the day. Honestly, I've never seen a company put so much effort into helping new people. And I'm definitely new to oscilloscopes. So this is basically just explaining how an oscilloscope works and how to use it and how to troubleshoot if you don't think you're getting a readout like you should, what to do and how to calibrate and whatnot. And I really do like that. They went out of their way. They actually show you how to do common measurements here, which is fantastic. This is going to be really, really helpful learning how to use the scope. Another cool thing about this oscilloscope is it has a micro USB cable and it can be charged using micro USB. And there it is charging. I'm actually charging it off of solar as I do with most everything around here. And actually what I also like is when you plug in the charging cable, the oscilloscope does not switch off. It actually stays on. So what that means is you could actually be using the scope while it's charging. Now granted, you might want to be careful measuring high voltages or if you're afraid of shorting something out, this would actually tie you into a ground, so that might be a problem. I assume this is going to tie you into a ground. If you're worried about isolation, you obviously should unplug the charge cable while you're using the instrument. I really like the fact that you can continue using the scope while charging it. Bottom line here, this is the first time I've seen a portable digital oscilloscope that I would be willing to buy. It's under $100, I guess, depending on where you get it. And it is actually very simple to use, I think. And I'm a total beginner and a total novice at oscilloscopes, and I didn't have any problem getting up and running on this scope in less than 15 minutes. It doesn't mean I know everything, but I was able to see a waveform in just a few minutes after getting the scope connected. Add to the fact that the probes are of good quality, it comes with a case, it comes with a charger, it comes with a home run manual, which is just amazing, I can't say enough good about it, I can't believe they put that in there. I'm a writer, and I know how much effort goes into creating good quality documentation, so I can definitely respect their efforts. If you're a beginner and you want to try your hands in an oscilloscope, the Finerci 1C15, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a good choice. I would definitely recommend it. If you're an advanced user and you already know how an oscilloscope works, this might be something you get for a spare, a backup, or a travel, or just using out in the field. I would say an expert is definitely going to know how to use every single feature and might even want more features. If you're a beginner, this scope is good enough. It's not perfect, but for the price, who can expect perfection? Please note I paid for this oscilloscope with my own money. I'm not being paid for this review. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.